This is for the pioneers and nomadic forerunners out there. I was recently in worship when I felt the Spirit of God come upon me ferociously, like the response of heaven intervening in the middle of what looked like the summit of many people's crisis and personal battle. Wondering who I was feeling this for, I then saw a huge multi-lane highway with many cars traveling upon it. I instantly knew that these were the pioneers, the nomads, and the forerunners of this season who stepped out of their comfort zone to follow God's leading. As I saw the cars, I felt like I was peering into a timeline where for these pioneers the call had intensified and become very real. The steps had been costly, the risk tangible, and the movement forward into the unknown life-changing. I saw a calendar before me, and I saw the long journeys many had embarked on, but then I heard three years, and I knew this three years from 2018 till now was where the call had become very real and the faith steps became more like faith jumps. What I sense was that this three year period of time was like a pressure cooker, full of trials and errors, giants in the land, testing, strength training, and feeling no closer to the finish line than when they started. These pioneers had lived a lifestyle of faith jumps for this time without any respite or break from the journey of extreme risk and had laid down everything for the Lord. And now in 2021, had come to a place of extreme tension. A place where either they are broken and dashed or they experience breakthrough. Many started out with wonder and excitement and adventure, but instead of supernatural outcomes and fulfillment, had been experiencing delays, loss, hope deferred, and closed doors. Then I saw the months of March to July of this year, and how in these months there was a boiling point that had been reached in the spirit full of even further increased hardship, stop signs, and the overwhelming pressure to give up. Then I heard the Lord speak. Do you see this season for what it really is? Can you look through the smoke and fog to see what is really unfolding? Do you see the door of hope or the door of death and finality? Do you see the tension and pain or the birthing that is happening. Right now, I am releasing eyes of faith to see this moment the way that I see it so that those pursuing the uncommon promise do not lose hope. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. The reality is we are in a moment of extreme tension right now. Between the hopelessness and the hope deferred the enemy is wanting you to buy into and the fresh hope that God is revealing. We are in the tension of the battle that we see raging around us and the promise of God and its fulfillment. We are in the place of extreme contention where the warfare seems to have increased because delivery is just around the corner. This is the bottleneck of breakthrough. It's where everything that you've been standing for and all the places of transition seem to converge into one moment of time. And we are in that moment right now. Do you have your eyes fixed on the breakthrough or the pressure? That's the question. The other tension of this moment for pioneers is that we are in the difficult process of unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, as it says in John 12, 24, where many have been experiencing the pain of the death of what didn't come and what didn't work out. You've been experiencing the grief of what has felt like a death to dreams and promises because they've been delayed and the waiting season has been crushing. 
It's felt like a season of burying and laying to rest personal promises and things that you never imagined that you'd have to say goodbye to. It's been a time of your heart having to reconcile areas of closure that you've been trying to hold on to and surrendering deep places of devastation to God that you've been soul sick over. But you've only seen the end, not the new beginning. You've only felt the pain of letting go of the difficult road and not the glorious revealing about to take place. Now watch what begins to come up from the ground, from the place of death, from the place of painful grief and loss. Watch what God brings back to life. Watch what He does through your surrender. This is not the end, pioneers. This is just a transfer checkpoint in the road where you must lay down the pain the questions, the grief, the trauma, and the burdens that you've been carrying, they must fall to the ground. Many have said in this season, after everything I've done, it still looks lost. But there is something coming that you can't orchestrate or have anticipated. You've done what you can do. Now this is where you watch God do what only he can do. You tried everything to keep that old thing alive and breathe life into dry bones, but to no avail. Now watch as the four winds of God blows upon your life, cleansing you, healing you, and resurrecting something brand new. You'll realize that the death to the seed was needed so that the new life could come forth and the bearing of the old had to be done so that something new could emerge. Then I heard the Lord say, now it's time to multiply. And I realized that the seed dying was for the purpose of the harvest that had to come. The blessing God wanted to pour out was in the ending to what had limitations upon it. This is where you see what you faithfully stewarded suddenly multiply and increase right before you. This is where you see what you surrendered turn into something you couldn't have imagined and your small mustard seeds of faith to follow God's leading become sturdy trees in the nations. This is where what looks hopeless and lost and dead suddenly begins to blossom and bloom into something beyond what you could ever have envisioned. You may not see it, and you may not be able to see how, but God is going to use what has come against you to multiply you. The words, the accusations, the judgments, the slander, all of it's being shut down and buried in their place. And God is springing forth redemption and favor you couldn't have imagined. Will I not vindicate the road behind you, says the Lord? Will I not restore what the locust ate, what was robbed from you? and deal with the injustice for right now I'm bringing restoration to your house I hear for some of you this is your do-over season where the enemy said you failed and threw shame at you you're going to be given a blank slate and a pen to write this new day with the Lord clutter free shame free and with a hope for the future again it's an hour of consecration where the battle-worn and weary, the ones who've been through hellfire and storms are running to the altar for fresh oil and for the resurrection life to revive them from the long road they have walked and to rescue them from the clutches of breakdown and death the enemy prescribed them. No, this is not that day. This is not the end. This is your new beginning in Jesus' name. Then I heard the Lord say, this is a hallmark of faith moment. But I didn't know what it meant. A hallmark is a stamp marking something's genuine properties of purity. And many have been through a season of blind faith and obedience and God is stamping them right now with his hallmark. A hallmark is the branding of heaven upon God's faithful who've been through the refiner's fire and through the valley of darkness. It's the mark of those who have navigated never-ending wildernesses, loss, isolation, persecution, and pressed on despite only seeing the opposite of the promise that they believe for. This is a moment that I believe all of heaven is celebrating those 
who've continued to press through for their families, even though the journey has been rough and unforgiving. And it's a moment of graduation and transition from believing to seeing and from pursuing to finally beholding. Hebrews 11 is known as the Hall of Faith because it speaks of the heroes, the pioneers and the forerunners that have gone before us. They were the ones that moved, migrated and left all on a word from the Lord and God calls them the heroes of faith. It says in Hebrews 11, 8 to 11, faith motivated Abraham to obey God's call and leave the familiar to discover the territory he was destined to inherit from God. So he left with only a promise and without even knowing ahead of time where he was going. Abraham stepped out in faith. He lived by faith as an immigrant in his promised land as though it belonged to someone else. He journeyed through the land in tents with Isaac and Jacob who were persuaded that they were also co-heirs of the same promise. His eyes of faith were set on the city with unshakable foundations, whose architect and builder is God himself. Sarah's faith embraced God's miracle power to conceive, even though she was barren and was past the age of childbearing. For the authority of her faith rested in the one who made the promise, and she tapped into his faithfulness. There's miracle working power being released through your story and through your life right now. You don't even see it yet. There is breakthrough just beginning to pour out through your hard season. I feel his presence right now. Many of you are just being delivered of just feeling like God abandoned you in the middle of all this. Many of you are just being delivered right now of just demonic voices that have told you that you failed and that God's given up on you, that he's passed you by. I'm I'm just here to tell you today that that's not him. That's not his voice. Wow. You're going to see this with your own eyes. You're going to see the fulfillment of this. You're going to see the ending of this. What has been stirring in my spirit for the pioneers in this pinnacle moment is that you're about to see the fulfillment with your own eyes. People have called you foolish and stupid for holding on beyond hope. But why do you hold on? Because God has deposited a rare quality in you, a stubborn faith that can't be moved even in times where you have wanted it to, even in times you wanted to give up. But you know what? Now you are going to see it established. Let me say that again. Now you are going to see that established. I prophesy. Now, 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 now you are going to see it established. Your journey of faith, your obedience of faith is going to end and result in the outcome of seeing the fullness, the finality, and the fulfillment of the promise of God. It says in Hebrews 11:40, but now God has invited us to live in something better than what they did. Faith's fullness. This is so that they could be brought to finish perfection alongside of us. And that's what God is doing right now in you pioneers. It's what he's doing in you right now. That, that nomadic way of life was a means to an end. It is not your identity. I right now just destroy this, uh, this identity, this concept, this mindset that you are a nomad forever. Like it's, it's a means to an end. Okay. It's an assignment. It's a mission. It's the Macedonian call for a season. And it may have been your whole life up till now, but it's not going to be all of it. It's not going to be the full thing. It's not going to be... It's not going to be the, the, the ending of this because God wants to establish you, wants to plant you. Okay, you're going to see the fulfillment and you get to, you're going to get to enjoy the fulfillment of this process and journey. I saw that the months of August to October were shifting months for the pioneers. There are held up outcomes and decisions that will be released 
in this time and pivotal decision-making revelation and insight that will come that is necessary to know how to move and when to move. There'll be the final release of delayed legalities and red tape that will un be unlocked and there will be loopholes and ways to move forward in areas that have looked shut. The convergence of hardship and promise simultaneously is going to produce not just a new beginning and way forward, but a breakthrough that is going to be like a sonic boom that clears the air and settles the road behind you. These months will be very important shifting months for those who are still living up in the air and haven't known where to settle and where to plant. Nomads and wanderers buckle up just a little longer. We're going somewhere because all your transition has not been in vain. But this is a time that for all your moving around and back and forth, God is going to lead you to the land that you'll be able to put down your roots. In the next few months, give him the frustration of not belonging and the pain of not feeling grounded in this process because you're being led to your nexus. This is the place where everything you've been stewarding will begin to unfold and be built. The warfare against you in this convergence moment is to cause you to shut down instead of pursuing the final stages of this grand adventure with God. But resist it. Just keep moving forward. This is where migration begins to increase because God is moving you into position for this phase of your journey. This is where God opens the way where it feels like there's been no way forward and no clarity and direction. Even right now as you are hearing these words, I pray for maps to open in the spirit and for you to see what you've been too clouded to see. Eyes open now. Eyes open now. Eyes open now. I pray that you would suddenly receive GPS navigation to this place that God has been preparing for you. In the months to come, God is going to stir you in a way you haven't felt in years. It will feel like a river is beginning to swell and break the banks of your heart and you won't be able to contain it. It'll be like a fresh, mighty wave building on the inside of you that you cannot hold back or hide. It's the wave of the Spirit of God that He gave you at the beginning of this journey to run with. Once just a tiny swell now through agitation and the process has become a formidable force for the kingdom. It's your movement. Maybe small, maybe insignificant at first, but it's building and something has shifted in the battle. Your movement is multiplied too, and soon you will see it impact the earth and publicly and globally and go beyond what you could have ever done with it. Your raw faith steps have produced this. Following Jesus has created this. You said yes, and he poured out the bowls of heaven upon it. And now you will see what has looked hidden and foolish to the world become a mighty giant for the kingdom of heaven. Your movement is about to multiply. Even now, God is downloading new plans, fresh vision for it, and establishing connections and pathways you couldn't have orchestrated. Soon it is going to burst the banks and you'll need to know what to do with it because God knows He can trust you with it. Like a puzzle, God is using you as a major player and piece for this time of history and for the harvest at hand. Soon you and others will see the full picture and the measure of what this looks like. You once moved with it obediently, but you were about to move with it strategically. You once saw it as an overflow of your worship, but soon you'll see that your worship has created an apostolic movement that is going to impact the nations. Get ready for fresh downloads and visions that will confront the outdated methods and starting to expire ways that you are operating in. God is giving you the building plans for the next five years and vision that will require another huge faith jump to step into. But it's already in you and God has already cleared the way. Pioneers, this is what you were born for. You aren't alone. Keep trekking forward because your life will be a sign and a wonder of God's goodness to all who see it.